All right, we're going to pick up where we left off with our discussion on populations and samples. And I'm going to redraw these pictures here from our populations and our samples to draw distributions, the distributions that represent them. So first, we have the distribution for our population. And let's say that it's not even a normal distribution. Maybe this is weight and we got some, you know, a lot of kids here down here, and we got a lot of adults up here. Or maybe it's something else, but it's definitely not normally distributed. Distributed, but you do have a mean for this, which I drew over here, and there's also a standard deviation that we can calculate, which I marked with a sigma up here. So we, and of course, we have our n. So we have our population, and we have the parameters for it, which is n mu and sigma, and this is our distribution for that. And then now we take a random sample, remember we did that, and uh, then we can, we, we can make a distribution for that as well. And this sample too, we can calculate the mean here, which we mark with an x bar, and we also can calculate a standard deviation, which we mark with an x. But let's say this is our first sample of many, so we're going to make that x bar 1 and s1. And n is our sample size. So let's take a few more samples here. So we got another random sample. We'll call this x bar 2 and s2. And here's a distribution of this one. We got a third random sample with its own mean and standard deviation. And let's say we did 20 trials. And so we have a, our 20th sample uh, has a mean of x bar 20 and a standard deviation of s20. So now look at this. We have a whole bunch of trials here. So what are we going to do with all of these? Well, we can make a new distribution. We're going to make a new distribution, and what we're going to put in the new distribution are the means of each one of these samples. So we'll put x3 in there, x, you know, x bar 2, and maybe there's two values that have this, so that would be, uh, you, know, you know, the distribution would be higher there. So let's put them all in one distribution. So each of these distributions contributed their mean to this distribution over here. And this thing is called the distribution of the sample mean. And of course, this thing has its own mean as well, and that's going to be called mu sub x because we're talking about the sample mean distribution, so it's the mean of this. And it also has its own standard deviation, which you may have guessed is going to be called sigma uh, sub x x bar because again we're talking about the mean. So this is our distribution of the sample mean. And now look at one thing that I did. I, I drew this here having more of a normal curve shape, not these weird bumpiness that you see here. And that's one of the, the properties that we're going to see here. And now this is called the central limit theorem. And what the central limit theorem says is when you have a distribution of the sample mean that is taken from samples of size n, and it all comes from a population with which has a, a mean of mu and a standard deviation of sigma, that the following things are going to happen. The first thing is, if you take all the possible uh, samples, you are going to have a normal distribution here. And in fact, the, big, the bigger this n is, the more, uh, you know, you're, you're, it's, it's definitely going to be more normal. The second thing is, this mu here is going to be equal to this mu here. So this sample distribution mean is equal to the real mean. And then the last part is this standard deviation here is going to be equal to this standard deviation divided by the square root of n. So this is an important thing. So let's review this here with the central limit theorem. And it says, given a population, okay, and it doesn't have to be normal, but it does have a mean of mu, and it does have a standard deviation here, of which we got a sigma, and, it's a sa and we create a sampling distribution of the mean. So we have a sampling distribution of the mean, meaning we take all the means here from our samples and we make a distribution here. Uh, using samples of size n, so each one of these, each one of our samples is of size n, we are going to create a new distribution, which is going to have a mean which is equal to the population mean, and it's going to have a uh, standard deviation, which is equal to the population standard deviation, divided by the square root of the sample size that we put in there. And it's going to be normally distributed, pretty much so. It's going to be almost, you know, uh, pretty close to normally distributed. 
And so that's what the central limit theorem says. Now we're just going to go over one more point here. Okay, what I've done here is just kind of simplify the drawing we had on the previous page. And we have our population here, population with a uh, size of n, this is the mean, that's a standard deviation. We have various samples which are now feeding into a, di a, sa a sampling distribution of the mean. And so uh, we're going to have a distribution of a sample mean here. And so what I'm going to say now is what if we increased this sample size? Let's say this was 30, we took samples of size 30, and we increased it to 50. What would happen? Well, the mean would stay the same. What would happen to the, to the distribution of the sample means, what I'm asking? The mean would stay the same, but this, the, uh, the standard deviation of the sample mean, well, you'd be putting a bigger number in here, so that would get smaller. So you could see the distribution would be skinnier, right? Because there's less difference in between here. And so now we have a, a skinnier one. So let's say we even made that n equals 100. What would happen then? Well, as you guessed, we'd be putting yet an even bigger number down here, thereby making this even smaller. And so our distribution of the sample mean would be yet even narrower. But the mean is always going to stay the same. The mean is always going to be the same as this. So the key here is the mean of the sample distribution is not the same as the mean of the popular, uh, or the, I'm sorry, the standard deviation of the of the, sta of the distribution of the sample mean is not the same as the standard deviation of the population. Look, this one's not even normal. This one is normally distributed. And the bigger the sample size we take, the smaller this standard deviation is going to be, and so the narrower these are going to be. And this value here, it has its own name. It's called the standard error of the mean. So it's the standard error of the mean. It's sometimes just called the standard error. So we went through some very powerful concepts in this particular video. So I just wanted to review it one more time. We talked about taking a population, taking samples from them, random samples, and generating these other distributions which themselves have means and standard deviations. And from those, forming the distribution of the sample mean. And we know this has some specific characteristics, namely that it's going to have the same mean as the population. It's going to have the, sa the standard deviation that is related to this one, but it's, it's divided by the population size of the samples, not the population size, the sample size. And this is going to have an approximately normal distribution. This is all courtesy of the central limit theorem. And we can see that as we take bigger sample sizes, our distribution of the sample mean is going to cluster more closely to our actual mean here. Our mean that we, of the sample distribution, which we said also equals the mean of the population. So that's it for this video. We're going to start using some of these concepts now to do some pretty cool things. Bye.